Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to prove that the inverse of an element of G is indeed unique. So the definition of an inverse goes as follows. So let small g belong to the group capital G. Then another element, let's say A is the inverse of G if the two conditions hold. The first condition is that A should belong to capital G and the second condition is G star A, assuming that star is the operation defined on the set G, this should be equal to E, where E is the identity element and that should be equal to A star G. Again, A is the inverse, G is the element under consideration and star is the operation defined. Okay, now let's get down to work. But before that, let's assume that suppose there are two inverses of G and let them be X and Y, X and Y such that x is not equal to y. Again, we'll try to come up with a mm, contradiction that x is indeed equal to y and therefore there is just one inverse of g in the uh, group capital G. Now, let's deeply dive into our problem. So, since x is inverse, x is inverse of G. Therefore, what do we get? We get that G star X is equal to E, which is equal to X star G. Let's name this as equation 1. Again, since Y is inverse of, right, the element G, we can write G star Y is equal to E, which is equal to Y star G. Again, this looks like two equations, but there are indeed uh, a lot of relations that we can define based on these two equations. Okay, now we'll do something which is uh, pretty magical, right? So, let us consider the element, let us consider the element um, X, star g star y now this element belongs to the group g because x y and g all of them belong to the set g to the group g essentially so by the closure property this element belongs to g okay now let us consider doing this particular problem or maybe finding out the value of x star g star y in two different ways. So the first method, right, in the first method, let us take x star g star y as equal to x star g star y, correct? So this is, this follows from the associativity, associativity. Also, the element inside the bracket right? This bracket is going to be the identity element. And why exactly uh, do we say that? We say that because y is the inverse of g. So, by the first part of the second equation, right, by the first part of the second equation, I have given some quotes over there for you to um, correlate with what I'm trying to say. So, g star y is equal to e, correct? and that will give us x. So what do we get? We get x star g star y is equal to x. Let's name this equation 3 and maybe you know we can put a box around it because we are going to need this in a while. So equation 3 is x star g star y is equal to y. Also uh, now what we do is that we shall consider 
another element, right? This another another method of writing the same element, x star g star y, right? Now, by the property of associativity, we can write this as x star g star y, correct? Now, this x star g, x is an inverse of g, right? By our initial assumption, we are supposed that x is the inverse of g and what we can get here is e and then star y and e star y is y because you know the operation of the identity element returns that particular element upon <coughs> operation that is uh, inherited from the group okay so now it's very clear to us that from equations oh by the way I, I must mention the equation over here. So pardon me for the little glitch in solving this problem. So x star g star y is basically equal to y. And that is equation 4. So we have got equation, uh, equation 3 and we have got another equation, equation 4. Correct? Now, we know that uh, the left hand side in equation 3 and equation 4 are exactly the same. So, therefore, x is x star g star y equals y implies that x equals y. So, this says that the inverse is unique. Correct? And that, my friends, has ended this beautiful, simple proof that the identity, that the inverse element is constant, is, is, is unique. There is just one, uh, uh, there is just uh, one inverse for each and every element of.